Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to those listening to this presentation. I want to thank the EC Council for coordinating this cyber talk, and I want to thank you who have taken the time out of your busy schedules to participate today. A little bit about me. My name is Daniel Monsowitz, and I'm a security and technology executive with over 25 years experience including cloud, SaaS, and big data companies with mo within multiple highly regulated industries, including healthcare and finance. I am passionate about helping companies leverage security as a business enabler and building programs to ensure the availability, privacy, and confidentiality of the information entrusted to those organizations. I have built and led cloud security and DevSecOps teams and responsible for security architecture, engineering, application security, business continuity, disaster recovery, incident response, and governance and compliance. I am the CISO and founding partner at Venture Security Partners, a firm specializing in cloud security services for small to mid-sized small to mid-sized businesses and helping them to be safe in the cloud. So I love challenges and finding the parallels between planning, training, and completing an epic hike in the clouds and managing a cloud security program. Here you can see a picture of me on the summit of Mount Whitney, which is the tallest peak in the continental United States at over 4,400 meters. Cybersecurity is like that journey. And today we're gonna to discuss a few important elements of a complete cybersecurity program business continuity, and disaster recovery. So our agenda for today. Today, COVID-19 has become the biggest overnight test of an organization's business continuity and disaster recovery plan. We're gonna discuss the landscape in the cloud and how to structure an effective strategy that enables resiliency in the cloud during an event. It's now more important than ever to remain nimble and secure as organizations pivot to the cloud and remote working moves from a novelty to the new reality for many organizations. We'll discuss strategies for development of business continuity plans, disaster recovery and testing, your data backup strategy, and testing and awareness of these plans. From this presentation, there are three key takeaways that everybody should keep in mind. The first, build your plans. The second is regularly test your plan. And the third is improving the plan. And we're gonna talk about the details of what those plans are in the subsequent slides. First, to level set, why is BCDR important? And why should our executives invest in these plans? Significant worldwide events such as the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020 were not anticipated, where most of the staff would be working from home. And it's not only this event. I'll tell you a story of my personal experience. I was working at a large SaaS provider a few years ago, and I live in an area prone to fires, one of our natural disasters. I remember one Sunday night, we were all notified through the, ve through the vehicles in our BC plan that the campus was gonna be closed due to a large wildfire in close proximity to the campus. And we put our BCP into execution. Now, each company will have different concerns and regional risks, and as part of the development of the plan, we need to spend time thinking and documenting what the risks are for your organization and the countermeasures for your company. Additionally, in a 2020 study by Sophos, which interviewed companies on six continents, many of whom from our audience are represented there, they reported that over 59% of the ransomware attacks encrypted data in their cloud so it's a key takeaway, no data is safe, not even in the cloud. And we need to ensure that the data there is well protected and we have our BC and DR plans for that data as well as our on-prem data. There was a recent Wall Street Journal article where the author noted that plenty of companies, and I quote, plenty of companies aren't taking basic steps to improve their readiness, leaving them exposed to breaches that can threaten their existence. 
Cyber attacks and ransomware, as we see in the chart here, are another type of event. And that event is estimated to cost companies 20 billion US dollars in the year 2021 alone. So then now we've set the stage for the importance of a BCP, let's dive into our topic. Business continuity plans are designed to keep you in business. These plans need to include provisions for people as well as services and systems. Now, cloud services remove the necessity of being physically connected to the office network in order to access the services that keep us running. Workforce suites available in the cloud, such as Office 365 and Google Suite, as well as Zoom and online video conferencing, and tools such as Slack for chatting, enable this access. Some of the considerations are for the people that need to access those tools, having fast enough home connectivity and a place to work remotely. And our IT teams have to monitor to ensure that our company security protocols are being followed when consuming these online and cloud services. And thirdly, we need to ensure constant communication. We need to educate our users on how to access those resources and make available instructions and contact information for them to request assistance when they're working remotely. And be sure to communicate with those people to instill confidence that the business will continue with these measures in place. So let's talk about building a plan. There is a great quote from an American General Eisenhower. He said, plans are nothing, planning is everything. And while yes, he insisted on having detailed, debated and documented plans, he also expected that things are not gonna go according to plan. He believed that much of the value is in the planning, the discussion of ideas and exploration of alternatives among the staff in creating the plan. Planning is the process and going through the exercise enables you to be successful in developing and executing the plan when it matters the most. Details matter. When you're documenting a plan, be very specific about the people involved, the roles and responsibilities, that's our who and our what. And there's a tool called the RACI matrix, which you can Google, which is a very useful tool here. It clearly lays out who is responsible, accountable, consulted and informed for each of the tasks in the plan. Next, we need to analyze the impact. We're gonna leverage information captured in our risk assessment, such as how might the pandemic affect our customers and our suppliers? In our era of worldwide supply chains, are there risks that could impact our business? Another example are the technical support reps set up to provide the support functions remotely via email, chat, and phone. In the COVID-19 period, think about all the additional support load and long hold times that we've all endured when communicating with the companies that we've done business with. So for our organizations, we need to make sure we've considered those angles as we're developing the plan. Then there's the when. When do we make the decision? In some cases, it's a government mandated shutdown and work from home orders that we've had during the COVID-19 pandemic. That was fairly obvious. And then how do you notify and communicate with all of your employees? All of those angles need to be factored into the plan. And for each individual, where will they be working? Do they have the tools, connectivity, a laptop or remote virtual infrastructure in the cloud to continue performing their job duties? And equally as important, when is it safe to return to regular operation? What are the technology implications of reverting back? There are many companies where the migration to the disaster scenario is a one way. There's no way to return back to normal operations. And so that also needs to be factored into the plan. So 
So now we've talked about the plan. Well, let's get into creating a BCP. So what's in it? On Google, you can find templates where you can begin filling in details for your organization. First, what are the most important products or services to protect? And how will we quantify the importance of those products and services? Is it by share of income that they contribute to the company's bottom line? The number of clients or potential for negative consequences if they cannot be delivered due to contractual obligations or regulatory or compliance requirements. So once we know the key products and services, what's the objective of the BCP? What do we want to achieve? Those are typically related to those key products and services previously defined. And the objective might be a 50% level of service availability. But that needs to be defined for each organization. Then what is the impact to the disruption to the company and the company's personnel? How long can interruptions last before becoming unacceptable? And make sure to ensure that you have the resources, even in the cloud, to restore the business services. During mass disruptions, there are many other companies that are also executing their plans too. And so demand, for example, for cloud resources will get elevated. So make sure you have your contracts and your cloud resources in place. Use the information captured in your risk assessment to create actions that minimize the risk, including the risks to your people, processes, revenue, and business operations. Make sure you have step five, up-to-date and accurate contact lists for key stakeholders and personnel so that you can notify them. And lastly, maintain, review, and continuously update your BCP. As your business evolves and personnel change, we need to make sure that that information is kept up to date. And once we've completed this plan, what we've done for the organization is we've assessed the levels of risk and vulnerability for the business, and we've developed an effective risk and contingency plan for the business to continue operations. Let's define some of the key terms that are very relevant when we're creating these plans. The first term is the BIA, Business Impact Analysis. That helps you decide exactly what needs to be recovered and in what amount of time. It's an inventory of your business and it helps you prioritize based on the level of impact for those products and services. Once we have that inventory, then we conduct the risk assessment, the RA. And that shows you and helps you define what are the greatest risks for your organization. It could be where your people are gonna work, raw materials used in your products and services. And in the cloud, it could be, do you have a guarantee to meet your business needs as you migrate from your on-prem data center to your cloud services? Two other terms that are important as part of the plan are the RPO and the RTO. And we have an image here that helps depict and bring this to light. The recovery point objective is how far back in time we're comfortable losing data. That's oftentimes a number like 12 or 24 hours. And the RTO is how long will it take to get our system back up and running? That's sometimes 24 to 72 hours. The lower the numbers are, the greater the cost and operational overhead to maintain the backups and underlying systems and processes. And defining these values are a decision by a combination of the business leaders and the IT leaders around that cost benefit analysis. And all of that needs to be conducted and included in our BCDR plan. So on the business continuity team, we need to know who the leaders are that call the shots. And we need to have that clearly spelled out in our documents, including alternatives if we cannot reach key individuals. Perhaps our CEO is incapacitated with COVID-19, just like the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. 
and we need to have the backup in place and ready to make those decisions. And these decision makers need to be in leadership roles at the company and empowered to make those decisions. And while they'll be working and receiving data from the business continuity team who are monitoring the events on the ground and gathering all of the relevant information, those are the people that will make the final decision on when we're going to execute the plan and then revert to normal business operations. And as we've already documented, we understand the services and functions that are impacted as these have been documented in the BIA for when we've actually made the decision to move to the, the DR scenario. And once we made the decision, we have clearly documented all of the activities that each team will need to perform to ensure a smooth transition. So we have our business continuity plan and now we have an event. So now we execute the disaster recovery part of the plan. Now, in many organizations, these will be in the same document, a combined business continuity and disaster recovery plan. So let's define what is the cloud disaster recovery. So there are many options. In some cases, it could be backing up to another region or availability zone from a single cloud provider like Amazon that has data centers all over, all over the countries in the world, or leveraging multiple providers such as Amazon's AWS as your primary cloud provider and Microsoft Azure or Google Compute Platform as your DR provider. Some of those are business decisions to have uh, to limit the capability of a vendor lock-in. Now, when a disaster occurs, the cloud provider allows us to follow our plan to resume normal business operations. And one of the important changes that's really enabled the cloud DR is the ubiquitous internet and cloud connectivity all over the world and the increasing set of capabilities and technologies from the cloud providers that are enabling this DR to occur. And for companies, the benefit is you don't have the expense of a second site or data center to be managed to accommodate your business requirements. And two, so all the businesses and employees have access to highly scalable and available cloud DR services for your organization. Responsibilities in the cloud motif. Cloud providers have this concept of a shared responsibility model. And that's shared between the provider and the customer, us, our organizations that are represented here today. The provider is providing the underlying data centers, physical infrastructure, the systems, and the foundational components of what was a traditional on-prem data center, the compute, the database, the storage, the network. They're responsible for securing and managing all of those elements, and they too will have their DR plan for managing those systems. On the top of this cake is the cloud customer, and they're responsible for using the cloud. Customer responsibilities include getting your data to the cloud, setting up your users and permissions to use the cloud, scheduling and testing the backups, configuring the encryption, and managing the resources in the cloud to meet your regulatory compliance and organizational requirements. Providers are giving the customers in the cloud a wide array of tools to manage these configurations to your specifications. And then that's the responsibility of the cloud customer to manage. So simply put, the cloud provider is responsible for the security and availability of the cloud itself. And the customer is responsible for security and availability of your information in the cloud. I like to use a sports analogy for data backup and recovery. We have our disaster recovery team. We have our documented plays in our runbooks and BCDR plans, and we've been training as a team. So when it's game time, we're ready to play. That's when it's time to implement the strategy. We have our inventory inf of information in our BIA. We have our backup policies, so we've defined what we're gonna be backing up in our RPO. 
encryption, which is very important from a privacy and often regulatory compliance and security perspective. Make sure that they're scheduled automatically. That should be part of the tools that the cloud providers are providing that we're leveraging. And backup restoration tests. The first time you test a restore shouldn't be when there's a disaster. These should be part of the ongoing testing that we're performing as an organization. Retention periods. How long do we need to keep the data? Oftentimes, one of the sections of policies, sometimes coming from legal or regulatory requirements, is the disposal of backups. We don't want to keep all the data forever. That poses too much risk and incurs too much cost. And what are the actual disposal policies and procedures? There's a system called crypto shredding where you actually destroy the key that was used to encrypt that specific backup. So that data is not recoverable. And then you can erase the backup knowing that the data couldn't be recovered by either a malicious actor or somebody that was trying to get your proprietary information. And again, I wanna stress the need for testing. Sports teams run the same plays and practice over and over so that during a game, they can execute them flawlessly. Similarly, we're going to be testing our DR runbook so we too can execute flawlessly in a disaster scenario. In our RACI, we'll have somebody identified as the BCDR leader, the person who acts as our coach, facilitating and ensuring that the plans are ready for the big game. If your BC and DR plan documents or a file on a SharePoint or, or other file server that hasn't been open in three years, when you need to implement it, like there's a COVID-19 or a wildfire, there will be gaps in that plan. Each time the organization tests the plan, you identify gaps and you find those holes. You create action plans and resolve them. And then you're improving the plan and improving the overall team's muscle memory. In summary, Include the business and IT when you're developing your cloud business continuity and disaster recovery plans. Start with the business impact analysis and risk assessment, which define what you need to recover and the business risks to the company. Hold training sessions for those who will be executing the plan, not just a business continuity manager himself sitting in a room running a tabletop, but include the whole team. Make sure you keep the plan, the stakeholders, and the inventory up to date. Conduct those drills and those tabletops with stakeholders. And if you follow these steps, you'll be prepared for the next disaster, if and when it strikes. Hey, got to dare to be optimistic. Maybe we won't have another pandemic. So as a reminder, the key takeaways, have your plan, your business continuity and disaster recovery plan, regularly test your plan, including all the stakeholders, and improve your plan. Identify those gaps, improve the plan, and then when it comes time for the game, you'll be ready. Thank you very much for your time today.